both of who got going to jail. And good evening. How are you, Alex? Oh, how are you? <laughs> there you go. I have to take my mute button off. <laughs> I, I, I thought we had to deal with your audio. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jack, well, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Appreciate yeah. being out here. Thank you for inviting me. This is great. You know, I have to say, I was really, really intrigued when I saw the episode of Unsolved Mysteries. I'm like, okay, I, I really would like to talk to Jack. This, 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 this would be really intriguing. Um, yeah, close to home too. It's not that far. very close. I yeah. and I do remember hearing about that incident uh, down yeah. there. I, well, right. I shouldn't say down there. It's basically like parallel almost to where we are. Sure. Uh, sure um, yeah. So, but uh, anyways, uh, just I guess. Give everybody uh, a small sort of who is who is Jack Bushong? Oh, okay. Well, um, I uh, uh, let's see. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> I um, I lived in. Uh, I was born in Michigan, in Muskegon, Michigan, and uh, my parents divorced, uh, and so my mom lived uh, in Fort, or my mom brought us down to Fort Lauderdale where her parents, my grandparents lived. And so I uh, basically would fly back and forth uh, with, uh, to see my dad and see my mom and, and see my dad in Muskegon, Michigan and, and my mom in Fort Lauderdale. So I did that th throughout my life and I loved flying, you know, mm -hmm. so I was a big, huge, you know, I was I was the typical un unaccompanied minor, you know, for for years and years, bouncing back and forth, uh, had to stop in Chicago change planes and stuff and so uh i just loved planes and everything um growing up and and also i loved weather you know and and so uh uh i uh growing up i thought you know do i want to be a pilot or do i want to be a uh, uh, meteorologist and uh and it's really funny though is, is uh, i live in an area right here in atlanta where we're close to the Atlanta airport, so we have a lot of pilots that live here, and a lot of pilots actually have had the same, uh, you know, thoughts themselves: is do I want to be a pilot or do I want to be a meteorologist? And uh, I found uh, one one neighbor. I didn't think I would have anything in common. He looked like, uh, you know, like uh, Paul Bunyan, you know, and mm -hmm. and uh, he he was he was a pilot. He he uh, he was a meteorology major and uh he uh, uh he also was into photography like i was and he was into astronomy like i was had a telescope i mean we had so much in common it was incredible you know even though outward appearances we looked completely different I mean, he had a big beard and he was you know he just you know it was it was funny but um so uh those were all my interests and uh um i can remember being three and four years old just wondering you know about the planet you know earth just wondering what you know where are we i just i just remember waking up and thinking what is this place you know mm -hmm. this this rock we're on and so um <clears throat> so i i my dad had a lot of uh time life books and i would look through them there was one book called earth it was just an old time life book called earth and I think uh, that's what really got me into uh, uh, really liking Earth science and uh, and astronomy and uh, and as both astronomy and meteorology. So um, so yeah, I went that route, and I've I've known I wanted to be a meteorologist since I was a, a little kid, about eight mm -hmm. years old or so. So um, so, uh, but I was I was interested in both planes and meteorology. So uh, um, I you know it kind of so with this thing happening you know to me while i was on duty was was kind of you know it was a good coincidence because i think if it was anybody else um they would have uh um they would have written it off maybe yeah yeah they, they may not have been serious about it uh but uh but i had i was i was interested enough in in aircraft that I wanted to see how well the, the radar would work when I was training on radar for, for a few years. Uh, I would uh, I would actually try to spot uh, aircraft and and, uh, and I was uh, 
and, you know, just to look to see, you know, where it was going and, and, and what their altitude was and stuff mm -hmm. like that, see how far I could uh, track it for. And so, so yeah, I would, I would, um, uh, the only place I really could find aircraft would be around the Chicago area, you know, Chicago O'Hare is constantly aircraft. Mm, going yeah. In, you know? So, uh, so, so I knew that I could see aircraft airliners, uh, going in and out of Chicago. I could actually see, see them, even though they were far away and, and I could tell the signatures of what they were, what they would look like. And, um, so, uh, um, so it, it kind of led up to, you know, when, when I got that phone call from Ottawa County Sheriff, Sheriff's Department, he said, can you look in the sky? I thought, you know, well, I can, I know how to find airplanes. I'll give it a try. So, and I don't think anybody would have, you know, I don't think anybody ever would have done that. I, you know, I don't know why, you know, I was, I was interested in finding spotting airplanes, but I don't think anybody else in the weather service would that's ever the, find that. That's that's the, weird the intriguing thing. thing about this. Yeah, I think. the the, the fact that you went the the extra mile to to want to know yourself, right? Because I mean, obviously, this is something that, like, because of who you were working for at the time, th this is pretty sensitive stuff. Yes, it is. Yeah. 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 I. You know, I was I was actually afraid to admit that because I didn't want the FAA to go. You can't be spotting. Uh, you know, you know how they want you to turn off electronics on aircraft, and here I'm spotting airliners. But you know, but when you do the math, and you know, my God, we're like 200, 150, 175 kilometers away from uh, from uh, Chicago, and I'm spotting a, 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 an airliner. It's not there's there's gonna it's gonna be such little power it's not gonna even show up uh so um i didn't uh i didn't think and it was only just for a few minutes i would do this at a time anyway but uh but i i know that uh but since since the uh, objects i was look i was looking at was much closer instead mm -hmm. of 175 kilometers away which is where chicago is compared to muskegon and what I'm doing is I'm looking at this this map, this radar map that I have. Um, I was actually looking at something that was at 50 kilometers away, between 50 and 80 kilometers. Let me see. And, I'll try uh, to pull it up here for you. Yeah, yeah. So um, generally in the same direction as Chicago, and um, and so. Uh, you know, I was actually surprised that I found it, but it had a big enough signature. Um, you know, it was there. Uh, the sheriff's department told me there's something over Ottawa County. Yeah, there you can see it now. Uh, so if you, um, you know, can anybody see my mouse when I'm doing this? I guess not. Probably. Uh, probably you'll see my mouse. Unfortunately, oh, okay. it's my mouse still see. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. So. Uh, yeah. So if if. You know, right in the center there is MKG. That's Muskegon. That's where I was. And uh, Ottawa County is the county to the south. And the, the, the Muskegon County Airport was right on the boundary with Ottawa County. So as you see right down to the south, that was Ottawa County. And uh, so uh, it the the objects had were at basically treetop level somewhere in the middle of that county uh and closer to holland maybe which is down to the south a little bit we're kind of right on the shoreline right there and to the south so um where where it was a treetop level was maybe about 10 miles from where holland is depicted on there kind of generally over over just a little bit north of that one dot um zealand uh, maybe just a, uh, a couple kilometers north of that that's that's where it was a treetop level uh, the uh, Holly Graves is the one that uh, had the police officer come over and uh, take a look. They were getting all sorts of phone calls, you know, but but they they responded to Holly Graves first because it was right over her house and very close to the ground. And so and they they once the uh, police officer showed up, Officer Bell House, it, it had gone off to a distance, but it also, uh, you know, it gained altitude. It was going off to the uh, southwest a bit, um, closer to Holland, and, and then down the coast, uh, you get South Haven. And so, by the by, the time I saw it, 
it was actually more into Allegan County, which is uh, uh, which is the county south of Ottawa County. And uh, and and the the so if you look uh, just where where you where you see Holland and it says 50 kilometers, I would say that uh, I started seeing it right around in that region. Uh, but it was in, it was on shore though. It was maybe uh, maybe uh, uh, five, uh, uh, three to four miles from the shoreline. Yeah. Uh, and so if you go down. And if you look over there by Douglas, you know, if you have, and, and maybe where the S is on Douglas, um, I would say that's where I first picked it up. And it was, it was pretty high up there. If it, it was, you know, it was hard to kind of uh, see, uh, you know, to follow it and make sure that I had the beam, the radar beam centered right over the object and I had to wave it back and forth manually um, uh, in order to, you know, I could, um, you know, I, obviously with a ray of, uh, let me, let me go off on a tangent for a second. Okay. Absolutely. Go for it. Okay. Now uh, the radar, of course, when you see a weather radar, it takes like forever for it to go around, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, you know, so, but uh, because uh, we're storm spotters, we have the ability to actually uh, take control over the radar and we can uh, take the radar beam and go side to side in one area to look at the storm or we can go vertically and go and we can spot it up and down. Mm -hmm. uh, unlike an air traffic control radar, which does one sweep and and sees the whole sky, they have to use uh, their, the transponder on the aircraft to know what the alt altitude of that aircraft is. They can't tell by the radar where the where the uh, aircraft is, because one swoop around is going to be the entire sky, uh, from zero to whatever tens of thousands of feet. So um, so anyway, uh, but mine is more like a, uh, what, whereas theirs is going out like an oval, a uh, mm -hmm. long oval. Mine is going out like a spotlight. And it's a more of a narrowed sp uh, spotlight, so uh, so I'm more focused and um, than than the and, and have better resolution than the uh, air traffic control radar, and so I was able to actually uh, um, what I did is I kind of did a grid search where I would go back and forth uh, toward you know with the radar kind of uh, adjusted at the bottom and I used it I have two hand cranks mm -hmm. one I went back and forth about you know one you know like uh, every half second one second two second three second you know going going back and forth you know like this and that would bring the radar beam to go go back and forth like that but at the same time I was took the other uh, crank and I was slowly rotating it so that it would rise and that beam would would kind of go in a grid and go back and forth as it went up and that's how i could find it and i finally did and you know by the time i found it it was around twelve thousand feet uh in the in the uh, uh an altitude above the ground so uh so it was around where that s is uh in douglas and uh and it was at about twelve thousand feet at that point the officer could actually see it down toward his south southwest at the same time. So it wasn't uh, it was it was he said it was in a pretty good distance away. But uh, um, compared to what Holly Graves, you know, saw when it was close to her. But he said it was making maneuvers uh, that uh, that didn't look like a, a regular aircraft. Now, now, when I started looking at it, uh, it it looked like a regular aircraft. It mm -hmm. had about, the, it had the same signature. Uh, one other thing about the radar is we have to know the intensity of rainfall, right? So the, the amount of, of uh, uh, radar uh, um, uh, energy that goes out in a pulse, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it, some of it comes back and, uh, you know, and some of it goes through the thunderstorm or whatever. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. So we have to know how dense that thunderstorm is, because the more dense it is, the more energy we get back, the heavier the precipitation. And we have a third graph that is like an analog graph or, or a uh, amplitude, for instance, a sine wave. And uh, and so that would show, uh, you know, more the more 
the higher the, 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 the sine wave would go, the more energy was coming back. And so uh, when, we, when we look for hail, uh, for instance, um, we would see, uh, because it's just, hail is solid, we would, we would say uh, um, it, it would look like a spike. It looked look like a spike on that, on that, on that uh, uh, amplitude uh, yeah. scale. So it would, look, it would just shoot up and look like a point instead of this fuzziness like a thunderstorm uh, or rain would look like. And so uh, at that point, I, you, you would know that you were looking at a solid object. Now, this thing that I was looking at, was a solid object, obviously, because it pegged the energy up. It was highly reflective. Mm -hmm. It bounced back basically 100% of the energy that it received. And, uh, and so that means, you know, it was, it was definitely a flying object of some sort. It was, a, you know, a, a highly reflective uh, flying object, and it was solid. You, you, you can't argue against it because of the energy, amount of energy that came back was pegged it to the top of that amplitude scale so you know and and it it like for instance you know how you you have level ones you know through 16 in today's color weather radar uh this would look like the you know on the purple range way up at the top you know and, and what what it would look like if you saw it at, on a on a weather radar if you does that make sense yeah so, so i mean when, you know. when okay, so initially when you when you saw these objects on the radar, it, it, like you said, it, it, everything looked kind of normal, right. until until they started moving, crazy, least, crazy, yeah. and and yeah. then what what were your thoughts then? I mean, like, okay, what's going on here? Okay, well, the the first thing that well, well, it was it was one thing is that it, it, for, for I would if you listen to the tape and I, I've I've listened to it over and over again trying to visualize it. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, if you remember, uh, if you if you if you remember on the tape, I said um, um, uh, it's spiking, so I know it's something pretty solid. Yeah. And so, well, that's exactly what I mean when you know I saw a spike on the uh, on the amplitude graph. And uh, so, uh, because it's spiked, it means it's solid. You know, just like like hail would show up only it was stronger than hail 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 might come up as a spike but it wouldn't go all the way to the top you know this this went just pegged it to the top and so i and and it um because it was much closer to uh the radar it would look it would be a stronger signal that than uh than the airliners i would see in chicago you know so so when I had something in Chicago that was at uh, say fifteen thousand feet or twenty thousand feet or so, um, it would look like a spike, but it wouldn't go up very far. You know, mm, it would yeah. be an uh, obvious object, and you would know, and I would know that it was a flying object because you can see it moving. You know, at a steady speed, you can see it's well off the ground. You know, and it's not. You know, it's not uh, it, if. A lot of people would say, well, you might have seen ground clutter. No, because because when you raise the radar beam, you're getting away from the ground mm -hmm. and there's less likelihood that, you know, you're going to be able to penetrate through any kind of inversion layer. So they always said that if you want to get rid of that, all that uh, junk, like say you have a really uh, bad day of, of uh, you know, with inversion, like like and you, which usually happens like early in the morning. Mm -hmm. And if you want to see if rain, if it's really raining or not, you just raise the, uh, I just raise that, that vertical antenna up just a little bit by a couple tenths. Maybe we, we normally had the radar beam at 0.5 degrees up above horizon. And, you know, as the beam goes out, the, the earth is dipping down. The, the radar beam is going straight out with a little bit of refraction um, going down, but uh, but the beam is going further out than the earth than the earth is uh, curving. So so the further out you go, the the higher off the ground you're going. And we have mm -hmm. a graph that shows that. So it shows, um, you know, exactly uh, uh, what, um, you know, uh, and I have this as one, one of the pages here, but uh, uh, but uh, let me let me see which which page that is. Uh, okay, if you look at um, 
page, the, yeah, the, basically the first page there. Page first one. page. Um, okay, so if you look at, um, if you show that, if you can show that, yep. that's be page yep. number one. Okay. Okay, so this would be um, uh, that graph would look like uh, um, the, the second graph that is useful. So I had three graphs, and this is graph number two. So the radar scope, and I showed you the map, which is round. Well, this is a square radar uh, scope where you can see the, the different. This is actually just showing that the, the, the the, uh, the altitude off the ground, uh, whichever, how many degrees that you have the radar tilted, you know, and this is kind of showing, you know, that the further you go out, the higher the altitude. Um, and uh, so it has kilometers on the bottom, nautical miles on the top, um, and it has kilometers uh, altitude on the left and uh, uh, a uh, number of feet, uh, like, 40 would be 40,000 feet, for instance. So, so in other words, so when I saw that object at about, uh, I saw, it, oh, say about uh, 70 kilometers away, and I was, I was seeing at 12,000 feet. So, if at 12,000 feet, I would have had the. Uh, um, I would have had the radar beam at about 1.8, maybe two degrees off, you know, off, you know, above, above the, uh, so I'd have the radar uh, antenna raised at, to two degrees. And that would be, and since our normal elevation, uh, um, the normal default elevation would be 0.5 degrees. I actually had the radar beam four times more than what it normally would be. So, so that's where you can rule out basically anomalous propagation or uh, an inversion layer causing the the radar to bounce off and come back down. Because I had the uh, radar raised four times more than normal, and when you do that, you get rid of all ground clutter. It doesn't matter, uh, you know, what unless you have a like a you know, a building right next to it, the radar or something, but uh, we didn't. It's, you know, it was well over the trees. It was high enough and, and over the trees. It had a good, uh, it had a good, uh, um, uh, we didn't have anything in the way that, that would show where there would be ground clutter in that direction. Um, but also uh, what brings it to another reason why um, uh, it looked like an aircraft was, you know, it was not only because I had it, the radar beam at two degrees, but I, you know, but it showed, of course, clear air below the object, to mm -hmm. the sides of the object, and above the object. It was floating. It was an object that was floating. Okay. It was a solid object that was floating. There was nothing else by it. There was no uh, precipitation there that day. There was nothing else around it. It was just a, a very... Uh, strong uh, reflection or, or, or uh, what we would call echo, um, you know, uh, right there in the middle of 12,000 feet off the ground and, and at, at that, in that, that direction. So, and I could see it moving. I could actually, I also told the uh, officer, uh, the dispatcher that, hey, I see it moving. Um, I can't really tell you how fast it was, but it looked, uh, it looked kind of like uh, I, it, it was it was definitely uh, moving south southwest and uh, and it was a steady speed. Um, I'm trying to think that maybe uh, like uh, maybe about took about five to ten seconds to, to reach um, South Haven there when I was watching it. Um, so. Uh, whatever speed that would be, I haven't really calculated that, but you know, I was estimating maybe between 100 and 200 miles an hour, you know, wow. and I figured something like that. But um, you know, it but it was it was moving at a good clip. It wasn't mm -hmm. like moving like a car or anything. So no, you know, some people have said, oh, he probably was seeing a car from the 
from the an inversion layer, you know, watching a car go by. No, this was a pretty pretty relatively high speed object, you know, going. Um, now, when it got to so after about ten seconds of watching it, mm -hmm. um, I kind of uh, lost it for a second, and so I did the grid search again. And I saw, I finally found it hovering um, up much higher. It was about, uh, it was over South Haven, but it was about uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, 50,000 feet at that point. So it yes. South Haven is uh, what about Southwest, south, right? To the south. Southwest of Holland. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or the South. Yeah. So, okay. so it had moved over Holland and which is right on the shoreline. And I saw it uh, basically it had shot up directly up and then was hovering there, hovering at 50,000 feet. And uh, um, and so, but then, um, so it was, it was there and it wasn't moving, but it was that same solid object, same, had the same uh, look on the uh, scope, on the, uh, on the, on the, on the graph, uh, the vertical graph, except it was much higher. It was towards the top of the graph there. Mm -hmm. And so if you pick out 80 kilometers, you know, I'm, I'm finding it with, uh, you know, at, at about 50,000 feet. And that would be like where I where you know, that would be where I had raised the antenna all the way up to uh, eight degrees uh, from the uh, two degrees that I had it uh, before. So um, so so that was a significant, um, uh, you know, altitude change and very fast, too. And one thing that got me was, you know, that really that I thought later on and, and I was wondering, you know, well, you know, about helicopters and stuff like that is, is I found out later is that heli because the air is so thin up, uh, up around 50,000 feet, uh, you, you know, you, you can't, you really can't have anything hovering up at that feet, except for a balloon and a balloon's mm -hmm. not going to yeah. go a thousand miles an hour. Up, that you know, quick, yeah. So, uh, but so, um, so when I said, oh, my God, what is this? It's because I was I was actually going up and down instead. I had the the uh, radar beam pointed in the exact same position uh, horizontally, but I was going up and down with the uh, with the option to see, you know, if, if I'm missing the one that was at 12,000 feet, see, trying to see mm -hmm. if I can find that one. Is this a different one or is this the same one? Well, this is one I found three of them. And, uh, but them. yeah, yeah. So this is one I found three of them. And I said, you know, I, I said, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I said, I'm getting multiple returns, meaning that I'm seeing three of them and they looked like a vertical triangle. So on this, on that graph that I just showed you, uh, there was one that was, you know, up at the 50,000 feet level. Uh, there was another one that was, and I said separated by 12,000 feet. So that was down probably around 38,000 feet. And then uh, there was another one um, much further away um, at about uh, about the same altitude. So, uh, but, but the funny thing is, is in order for me to see all three of them in that, uh in that radial you know that number of degrees you know the 360 degrees around the the radar uh so if you if you take back the uh if i can have the the map back yep. um, you know uh, if you can show the map um uh it okay so uh it was it was a vertical triangle but it was directly in line with each other and directly in line with my radar so it was it was crazy because it was like it was lined up perfectly with my radar beam that would have been pointing basically due south so so the rate the rate the beam would have been at 180 degrees but i was going up and down say uh from uh I was probably, I guess I was probably going from the two degrees to the eight degrees up, up and down. Um, and, uh, and seeing the three, um, three flying objects and, and they made a triangular formation that was vertical. But the thing that is crazy is that they were directly lined up with my radar. And 
and and that that would basically be impossible unless uh you know in, unless it was some you know some military aircraft that was playing tricks with my radar or the the objects uh knew i was looking at it and was showing off or something like that or saying something like and i thought about this later mm -hmm. it's like how could this happen and and i didn't really i didn't think i could explain it well enough because it was only for like a couple seconds that i saw it that way and uh and i had to think about it really hard but i finally uh thought about it um when i heard another radar operator say that he thought that the objects knew he was looking at it with their radar and that was another documentary and i and i'm that, that made me feel like did they know that i was looking at them you know because they did start acting crazy after i started looking at them after about a few seconds when all the eyewitnesses on the ground were saying that they were kind of moving at a slow speed and kind of steady um and so um so it's making me think because it was lined up directly with my radar mm -hmm. um it, you know like if you drew a line from the one furthest away even though they were at different altitudes they were still down the radial of the, of the radar um and you can't you can't get that uh unless you know you're lined up with the radar so so every one of those even though they were at different uh altitudes um they were they were in the the radar beam. They were within the radar beam. So um, I can't explain that, you know. And so, so, and then five, ten seconds after that, then they split. They it's like they went from a vertical triangle like this, vertical, uh, a vertical triangle that was like this, and then all of a sudden I see them at the same altitude but they're at a horizontal triangle. And now I'm seeing them on over on the map where there's one at South Haven, there's one uh, down over by Benton Harbor and another one I said was over by Coloma. And that was like, it was like a, a, a triangle that where they were separated by about 20 miles each, but it was, they were all about at the same altitude and, um, and I could pick them up as I, you know, rotated the radar side to side i could you know say i was i was going from maybe say five o'clock to seven o'clock and i could get them you know as i bounced you know rotated back and forth i was picking all three of them up and they were all hovering at that point and they were all at the same altitude so they were all also showing uh the spike so when i when i would point at one it, you know it would spike up and then i point at the other one spike up the other one spike up they were also the the two that were further away down to the south from the south haven had less of a reflectivity um which would make sense because it's further away from the radar mm -hmm. right yeah. so uh so it, it it told me that it's not really playing trick they're not playing tricks with me they're they're actually you know uh it's actually acting like the laws of physics with with the radar and mm -hmm. so you know it, because the radar beam as it goes out it spreads out so you know at south haven uh the radar beam go it goes out like a cone gets bigger and bigger as it goes out so at, at south haven the the radar beam is about a half mile wide so uh anything within that half mile uh of of the radar beam would show up as one object so if there's something in a tight formation um it would show up as one object it would okay. show up as one big object but it would show up as one object so um but uh but these were now far enough apart that i could i could and i don't know if that first one wasn't you know was where where they were you know three together mm -hmm. and, and i just couldn't tell them apart because they were too close or if these other two came from somewhere else i have no idea there uh, there, there there was one one i guess one one of the witnesses i think it was in uh south haven i guess um that that uh said that it just all of a sudden the one split up into like five smaller at one point or something like that 
Well, that and that would make sense with what yeah. I saw. Yes, and the police officer told the dispatcher that he saw it split up into three. Wow. And, and I thought, you know, I thought I saw a fourth one in there. I mean, yeah. it was like a, you know, it, it seemed like it was a strong, you know, uh, three point triangle, but uh, and equally spread apart. But but it seemed like I was I was picking up a fourth one that kind of popped around a little bit i just couldn't really i didn't know what that one was it was hard to follow um it was easier for me to look at the ones that were just maintaining you know hover out you know uh, they were hovering at about uh 15 000 feet or so um and so um so then uh but that would make sense for instance when somebody on lake michigan a, an eyewitness said Mm -hmm. He saw them split apart and come back together again, split apart, come back together again. So, um, yeah, it, it, you know, when it did that vertical triangle and then it split up and, and did a, uh, you know, a, a wider 20 mile triangle, you know, um, yeah, from the ground, I could imagine it would look like that too. Um, I can only imagine. Um, so what, what, what are your thoughts? Like, I mean, what, what you were witnessing and from your, you know, your experience and your, your uh, past experience with, you know, aircraft and, 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 you know, spotting them on radar and everything else yeah. and movement. And I mean, is this something that, that you'd ever seen before? Oh God. Oh God. No. And I tried to find, uh, uh, I tried to, for, for months and months uh, until I moved to Atlanta, uh, I tried to uh, look for that again. I, I tried Never. to look around and I couldn't find anything. I would occasionally find a uh, um, an airplane and just follow it, but it's just an airplane, you know. And um, and so uh, and and that's the thing is I could see them, you know, banking where they would make a curve around. Mm -hmm. Whereas these objects, when I found them. They they only seem to move in, in you know right angles. They they would they would move, stop, and then change directions, move, stop, you know, and they did it that way. So, um, but I never saw them actually make that little bank curve like an airplane would. So uh, it was uh, it was really hard to explain. I mean, I really thought I was looking at something. Uh, interesting and and i you know um i i actually for a while i was uh what i was nervous about was was not that they were gonna like for instance uh, come over and, and you know get me or anything mm -hmm. but yeah. i was actually nervous for the radar that that they would that maybe they whether military or not uh that they would send a, a strong pulse back that could actually uh, energy pulse that could oh, actually wow. blow the um you know blow this the uh the the two what well, was a two you know it was analogs so it was tubes but but i i was i was actually <laughs> visualizing my console uh sparking and <laughs> sputtering and all that you know blowing up in my face you know I, I had no idea i and i and i was thinking about boy that would they be mad at me when <laughs> when i when i damaged the entire radar from top to bottom you know and so so that did go through my mind that you know and, and at, at that time i thought they were probably mad that i was looking at them but as time went on um i'm beginning to wonder if they were actually just saying hello you know hey i know you're watching hey, we're here so, yeah yeah here let me uh let me yeah, hey look what we can do or or um you know hey I, I know you're watching me and and watch this you know hold my beer watch this <laughs> you know, something like that but um but it took a long time I, I don't think i really thought that it was a friendly thing until uh maybe um it, it was after the uh um the, the show that I did with um, Unsolved Mysteries, I think. Uh, maybe, maybe it was around that time. Gave you uh, because I, I was trying to watch uh, other documentaries and see, you know, the comparisons and, and stuff and, and, and hearing about what the Navy, Navy was, was seeing at that time. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, it really, it, it was, 
you know, when I would hear what the radar operators would say, I was like, man, that is exactly what I was seeing, you know. Because, I mean, there's like an, there's a, what is it, an unwritten code that, that you guys should not be talking about. This should not be, you know, look at, they're, they're going to think you're crazy or something. For, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and and I mean, is this, you kept quiet about it? You, you didn't really talk yeah. about it until like later on, obviously? Yeah, I, um, uh, well, because not uh, when, when uh, employees of the Weather Service, when they get um, uh, hired, uh, you don't know what office you're going to end up going to. Mm -hmm. It could be, uh, you could be moving to another state. It, it just, I was just lucky to be able to, uh, to be hired uh, in, and at first it was Grand Rapids. And then, mm -hmm. and then I wanted to move closer to my family, which was in Muskegon. So that was just 30 miles away. And, mm -hmm. and I, I paid for the move. My I got up and paid for the move myself. And, and uh my wife uh, I j we had just gotten married and um when we moved and so um but the uh the the boss for michigan he was the area manager of michigan allowed me to when there was an opening he allowed me to move over mm -hmm. uh, at no cost to the government which was great thank you yeah you know? yeah and i like you know i loved being able to go to lake michigan and, and do the trails and stuff like that with my uh, had a lot of fun with that you know i had a little tiny sailboat that i you know, could play with but um so i was really outdoorsy um but uh um now growing up in fort lauderdale occasionally we would see something weird in the sky because of cape canaveral and i mm. saw some really weird things i mean there there were uh, you know, in, in the middle of the Cold War, uh, I, I would see rockets or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, w I was occasionally worried that they were nuclear missiles, you know, but uh, um, but yeah, because you never know. Back yeah, then, you yeah. never know. But they yeah. but these rockets would go up and, and do all sorts of, you know, things where they would have they would change colors and they would look like they were releasing uh, some sort of gas, you know, and and whatever they were doing but but there was um even from fort lauderdale and, and cape canaveral is a good uh four or five hour drive away you could still see the the stuff yeah you know, it was at a high altitude so but i i constantly had my eyes to the sky but but you couldn't in fort lauderdale with all the lights and the light pollution you couldn't really see anything but in in michigan you, you we really did have a, a good a clear you know night sky to look at so uh, i really enjoyed uh, uh using my telescope and, and that's when i really learned you know uh about navigating you know where the north star was and, and all that so i was i was getting really interested in astronomy at about that time um as well so um uh so i you know um my job actually was to was a trained observer i was to actually go out and look at the sky and you know and see you know what type of clouds it is mm -hmm. you know and estimate the the altitude uh we did have a, a, a laser beam that did shoot up and we could see uh the altitude of clouds going up to about twelve thousand feet or, or or else but but we would have to uh um, guesstimate you know the higher clouds um, but, but that was my job was observing the sky, you know, and yeah. every hour on the hour I had to do that. So for, you know, I, you know, throughout my entire shift, every day I worked, I had to do that. So, um, you know, but also, uh, you know, at the same time that we're, you know, certified and being a weather observer, you know, just looking at the sky, we're also certified as a radar observer. So we had to know how to describe what we see on radar what to check for look you know and and uh and uh and uh you know see um you know be able to to know what you know what you're looking at when you're looking at a cross section of a thunderstorm and stuff like that yeah uh, also you also have to know you're you're trained on uh because anomalous propagation or the ground clutter can look like rain you got to be able to know the difference between that and so i was trained in all that and this is this is what really kind of this is how it came out when i started talking about it was because there was a um 
I guess it was a, a, the it was a um, anniversary date, uh, maybe two or three years ago for the, mm -hmm. for the 1994. Um, you know, so it was like March. It was March eighth, twenty uh, maybe twenty twenty. So or maybe okay. twenty nineteen. I guess probably. Okay. So it was a it was a good uh, what is that a um, twenty year anniversary. 20, 20. Or, 30, 30, 94 uh, what would you say yeah. 20, 20 yeah, 94 yeah. To 20, 25. 20 yeah so 20 yeah 25 there you 25, go 25 yeah. year anniversary so um so uh but the um they interviewed the um somebody in grand rapids a, a weather a meteorologist in grand rapids um i was already retired uh and uh the the meteorologist the weather service said i was probably looking at anomalous propagation or was looking at an inversion layer you know and that yeah. just that made me so angry i oh, i threw out a letter you know and well because the then the meteorologist that was talking about it, the tv meteorologist channel three yeah um, he said oh yeah well he explained how inversion layers work and mm -hmm. for crying out loud we were trained in this yeah the difference between that because it looked what I saw was completely different from what anomalous pro I mean, there, there was no comparison at all in any way, shape, or form. I mean, it was just, just none. And uh, I mean, uh, if you remember what rain looks like on a radar, that's what it looked. That's what anomalous propagation looks like. You can't. You don't get just one little solid dot with anomalous propagation. You know. So yeah. I fired off a letter, you know, or a comment on on his uh, website, and uh, and told him I was the operator, and I said no, it was not an anomalous propagation. I had, uh, you know, the radar um, at times elevated to, you know, as you see, as you see, six eight degrees, and that would get rid of any uh, any ground clutter at all, you know, and and you would penetrate any inversion layer. Um, so it was no way possible and, um, and it didn't look like that anyway. So that's how I, that's how it all started, um, was then the meteorologist wanted to interview me and yeah. so we had a, a meeting just like this. And then from that came, uh, the, uh, unsolved mysteries. And so that's how it all kind of started. You know, I, I was, I, I, I pretty much figured, you know, nobody cared about it anymore. It was nice. It was so many years ago. Yeah. And uh, I was retired. And so I, um, uh, I'll tell you what happened and it made me mad was uh, um, I was the homeowners association uh, president okay. in my neighborhood here. Right. And so, uh, so anyway, I, I had a uh, disagreement with somebody, you know, in the neighborhood. And uh, of course, there's always disagreements. You can't make everybody happy. No, everybody. exactly. Well, anyway, this person that I made mad, she writes the entire neighborhood and says, oh, look, we have a star amongst us. Jack Bershong <laughs> is involved in this UFO thing. And, you know, and I was, you know, you, she was she weaponized it, you know. Like, oh, yeah. Now. So she she put it out there to make me just completely reduced my credibility you know, <laughs> as the president of the HOA. So uh, that and that, you know, that made me mad so much. So so, you know, so I would would have rather not have, you know, that that put out there because, you know, when you get involved in a story like this, people don't know all the details they just exactly say, oh, God, he's a ufo nut you know and mm -hmm. you know he thinks he saw a ufo on radar well it's not just that but you got the uh um you know you got the radar tape you have all the witnesses on the ground you got cops you know seeing it and so you know and so people don't hear all that they just hear oh, i saw something on radar some people in the weather th service thought i saw something on the radar as a UFO and I called the cops. <laughs> I'm the one that called yeah. That's what some of the meteorologists in Michigan thought, you know, in, in some of the offices and some of them still think that, you know, so, um, so people that are, are gonna, you know, let's face it, people that don't 
are skeptical of UFOs, don't believe it, or think it's all silly, or, or yeah, yeah, you know, uh, or think that we're all nut jobs. They're not going to watch this. They're not going to listen to all the details that, that I'm giving. And uh, so, um, and also, you know, I've heard some, whereas some of some of the reaction, most of the, or almost all the reaction was good. Um, there were a few people that would say we're cynical and say, ah, he's just doing it for fame. Okay. Uh, good grief. Fame. Uh, let's see. This happened 28 years ago, or 25 yeah. years ago when I finally started talking about it. And, uh, you know, money. No, I'm, you know, I'm not, I didn't get a dime for doing unsolved mysteries. I, and, and I, I'm actually in the process of writing a science paper the first one's going to be strictly science, the mm -hmm. observations, how the radar works, and go down the list of what it was not, you know, yeah, yeah. be a list of, okay, this is what it isn't. This is what I know it's not and why. Mm -hmm. And so I was and so for that science paper, I'm not going to uh, be, I'm not going to um, uh, try to, um, uh, give my opinion on what I, I saw. Um, just give the facts of what I know it's not. And yeah. um, and so I, I what's the word for it is I'm not gonna that's it. I'm not gonna speculate what speculate. I thought. <laughs> now uh, and I'm gonna send that out. Um, I have a presentation that at, at the library up in Norton Shores, Michigan, uh, set up for June twelfth. They they invited me for this. And so I'm going to, uh, I'll try to get this, well, I have to, I got to get this paper done before that and then get a PowerPoint presentation ready for that. So, uh, so that's what I'll be busy with in the next six months. And, um, and I, I'm putting this out. I'm not, I'm not looking for money or fame. I'm, I'm everything I write is going to go out, you know, open source, mm -hmm. just, you know, take it. I mean, I'm, I'm a government or I was a government employee. Yeah, it's not really ethical to make money on your job anyway. Mm, so yeah. those, 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 you know, so when the first lady writes a, a book about her dog, it makes a ton of money. You know, it's not, not exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it's uh, it's supposed to be illegal, but but anyway. So uh, so yeah, I I just uh, I, I suppose now that it's out, you know. Um, and my my observations match some of the observations of other radar mm -hmm. uh, operators. Um, you know, I just feel kind of obligated that I need to get this info info out. It's not it's sort of vindication, but it's just you know I, I have a record of everything I saw. It's on tape. I can explain what I was talking about. You know, I was going to take a get a transcript of of that whole. Uh, uh, conversation and explain some of the radar, you know, mumbo jumbo I was talking about. Did Did you know that you're being recorded during that uh, conversation with the with the police officer? No, I didn't. Oh, that that that's yeah. I I, I had no idea. Um, if if I had known, I wouldn't have gone. Oh my God, what is? That? I would <laughs> yeah. not have said that, and. Um, and gotten kind of excited and a little nervous too at the same time, mm. but it didn't, it honestly did not cross my mind at all. Um, oh. And so, you know, so I, I wrote, you know, I watched the whole thing for, well, the phone call was, was, was done. Once it left and was way out of Ottawa County, mm. uh, the Ottawa County uh, um, dispatcher was, and also the cop couldn't see it anymore. It moved off. Mm -hmm. um and uh so uh it sounded like they were they were done talking about it so or, or done being worried about it is what i mean and so um so they hung up i had to catch up on some duties um right around the office do a weather observation get on weather radio and, and talk about what's going on in michigan and uh and and do my usual um you know forecasts and stuff like that so but I came back to it, and in my free time, I would be able to watch it. And it was, it, it was there. I could find it every time I went back and took the radar on manual, uh, and I could see it. And I even saw we have we had a monitor of the radar, uh, which was a color monitor, and it was a mosaic. They took a mosaic, and they they do this still now with their radars, but they they 
they take a mosaic of every radar mm -hmm. weather service radar around the country and then they mosaic together and you know and then they can get like that that um uh you know that u.s radar map of yeah. all the you know returns all the presentation so um so that's what i was uh, seeing so so on that monitor we had out there not only was i able to see what my radar was seeing but what the milwaukee radar was seeing what the chicago radar was seeing and so whenever they you know showed the area where they those uh, ufos were hanging around in the middle of lake michigan um uh, uh, it was in the middle of lake michigan straight out from benton harbor they were all there hanging around and i could see that on that um that uh that mosaic so yeah uh so they they sat there for a long time for hours and i watched them um you know but uh but the the most amazing thing is that when they they uh, uh when they moved they would they would go from a hover to a extremely fast like within a second they would move 20 miles and then and then hover, go to another hover so it would jump you know hover 20 miles hover you know within a second you know and i would base it on a second was because i was kind of tilting my hand like you know uh every you know going back and forth every second you know for instance so and, and i would watch it just you know disappear here and show up here you know and, and there was some um, sort of some sort of formation too that they were kind of sticking to like yes. a, almost like a yeah. triangle sort of yeah it, it kept doing it uh the ones that were further well the one that was closest mm -hmm. uh to the radar um which also looked bigger on the radar uh yeah. south, it was over south haven that was the first one to move out to the middle of lake michigan it did it in two steps it, it went out there uh it moved it would to move 20 miles hover the other two would, would come back and, and they would go then they would move mm -hmm. uh at different times and form that triangle again and then uh and then it would move it finally moved uh, more to in, instead of going westerly direction like it had then it went southwesterly direction for uh 20 miles and at that point it was in the middle of lake michigan and then the other two followed and uh you know at, at a couple a couple seconds apart uh they moved and, and made the same formation again and, and then and then from the middle of lake michigan they they kind of went uh they moved a little bit at a time towards the south Mm -hmm. and finally ended up in this location and just sat there and that that's when i saw dozens and dozens of them oh, uh, wow. just kind of lingering around it, it it honestly looked like it uh, to me it looked like uh, it reminded me of uh, like when ants find a dead bug and they're all clustered around it yeah. and uh you know and and also i, I you know so most of them were hovering but uh, almost all of them were hovering, but I could see a few kind of, you know, meandering amongst, you know, all of them. It was really interesting to see that, you know, uh, it, it was so crazy to see something like that. So you got, I mean, just think about it. It would be like, you know, dozens of hot air balloons sitting in one place. And then you have this little airplane kind of, you're maybe ultralight going around the, the balloons you know um just imagine so uh it was it was just crazy so crazy and and this isn't this was in an area where nobody really could see it you know mm, the radar yeah. see it, but i don't think anybody from the from the ground uh anywhere around lake michigan looking out would be able to see it but uh, uh although somebody did witness something uh, out there um you know, that was another story. So when you were when you were on the phone or on the call with with the the police officer and he was going over what he was witnessing, I mean, what what, what kind of uh, sense were you getting from him? Do you, do you, like, was he was he seemingly like okay, this is just completely unbelievable? Like yeah. you probably trying to make make sense of it all, yeah, we were uh, and, and say you know trying to discount. The, all the possibilities and everything's just yeah. thrown out the window and bang we have something just no completely... he, he uh this officer bell house is, is definitely a very he was very professional actor. yeah uh very as a matter of fact 
type person, you know, um, and, you know, get to the facts and, and, you know, I mean, just kind of like the dragnet guy, you know, <laughs> you yeah, know uh, yeah, uh, dragnet, yeah. Joe Friday. <laughs> oh, that's a, that was a crazy uh, coincidence too, is, uh, believe it or not, our, our, um, uh, our national weather service director at the time, his name is Joe Friday at the time. Oh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Officer Bellhouse reminded me of, of you know, the, the dragon guy, Joe Friday, because he, he was just very, very to the point. Mm -hmm. But for him to say, you know, um, basically, you know, what I saw and what he was seeing that he said there was they were matching up. And uh, he said that uh, they he said they, they did not move. They were obvious aircraft, you know, that did not move like regular aircraft move. They, mm -hmm. they moved in a, in a uh, much different way. You know, they made maneuvers that aircraft cannot make. And he, he admitted that, that mm -hmm. this for a guy like that, I can imagine that was a hard thing to admit. Oh, yeah. He got tangled up in this. I, I think. I know that he had turned down a few interviews, um, but I, uh, you know, I always, for Unsolved Mysteries, for instance, um, I, I told the producer that we really had to get Officer Bellhouse on this. And I would like yeah. to meet him, actually. I never did meet him. I oh, you never met him? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was the first time. That was, the, you know, basically Unsolved Mysteries is the first time I met any of these people. So I have never really... I always wanted to kind of research it a little bit, but I never actually seeked out to, to meet any of these people. And it wasn't oh, really? okay. Unsolved Mysteries that I got to meet all these people that, I, that I've that i talked to on the phone mm -hmm. a couple times. Um, but uh, and some of them I've never talked to on the phone, like Holly Graves. Um, but, uh, but, you know, here 25 years go by and, and finally I'm seeing these people that, you know, that's in, in, in amongst this whole big story, you know. Yeah. So, so what? Uh, so, what has it been like after the uh, after the episode and the story got out there? What, what's What's it been like for you? Um, well, it's been it's been very hectic, uh, yeah. and uh, I have uh, uh, maybe a few hundred, uh, um, mostly Facebook Messenger, uh, you know, uh, chats going, and and. Uh, so, you know, I, I constantly see, you know, in the, you know, the way Facebook Messenger works mm -hmm. is if, if you're not, if they're not friends with you, they get in this one uh, folder, you know, yeah. and you have to kind of approve, you know, once you, once you write back to them, you're approving, you know, uh, to be able to talk to them back and forth. Um, and I have, you know, probably a few hundred friend requests on Facebook too that I haven't gotten to. <laughs> um, uh, I I'd like to. Uh, I guess there's a lot of interest in it, and, and that's fine with me. And I'll be happy to uh, share, you know, with these people what what I come across. And since I'm retired now, and I, I like to go up to Michigan every summer, so and spend some weeks camping so uh, uh so why not why not let's let's let, let me talk to all the observers and or the all the uh, witnesses and see uh, you know I, i'm interested in it now that i i i i'm uh i've ruled out everything it possibly could and and i finally ruled out that uh, um, i don't i just don't think they were military and especially with the way the, the military is so so the, the the technology is out of this world do you think i i, th I think it is yeah. you know i was actually waiting for something uh well with the ukraine war I, I was i was thinking you know if we have these uh if we have these uh um, flying aircraft mm -hmm. uh, then uh it, or if china or if russia had them i'm sure we would have seen them and we haven't you know? yeah now, there's been some observations of them and maybe uh, who knows maybe they're checking it out you know because it is a war um but uh but i thought if you know if, if anything you know being this close to you know probably the closest to nuclear war than we've been since, since mm, the yeah crisis, uh that this would be the time that you would see it, I would think. If we had, if we had, I mean, why, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, 
I'm, I don't know. What's your opinion on it? I have no idea. What do you I, think? I don't know. I just, yeah, I, I think I, I, I agree with you. I, I do think if, if, if now when you have so much tension going on that, that yeah, it would yeah. be an ideal sort of time for to see like a, an updraft, I guess, of, of, of this kind of activity. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I myself had a, um, an event that uh, I can't explain either. Uh, not quite, quite as obviously as, as extensive as, as what you experienced, but what I had seen uh, were small uh, or, well, they seem small from the, from my vantage point were, were small orange uh, orbs that, that were like literally moving beyond anything I'd ever seen before. And, and there was just absolutely no way they were planes. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Were they round or were they like from from what from what I could see in the sky from my like I said my vantage yeah. point they seem very uh, circular. Okay. Uh, and and they 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 again they would they would hover and then all of a sudden they do this crazy maneuver and sort of come back and hover together and then move they they'd split up and yeah. one one would drop below uh, the horizon I, I wouldn't be able to see it anymore and then all of a sudden two of them would just sort of dance around and just take off and then come back uh i i mean i actually have cell phone footage of it but unfortunately uh, unfortunately uh this was uh i guess what 2004 i think it was and cell cell phone cameras back then were lousy we're not very good. Yeah. and uh so i i the footage i i, I was able to capture isn't the best <laughs> unfortunately yeah. so right yeah, I'm. I'm actually going to do an experiment. Uh, to, I'm. I'm. Uh, 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 I've been a professional photographer too. I've been really interested. In, I've been doing photography since I was little. Like that's one of my big hobbies. And then, in fact, on my Facebook page, I list myself as a retired meteorologist uh, and photographer, professional photographer. But um, I, I had my own dark room. I used to develop color in black and white. And I had a larger a Chromega color and larger. Um, so I was big into it. And I've been a photographer ever since. I've done uh, weddings and stuff like that. And um, uh, uh, since my wife is a teacher, I've done some senior uh, photos for, uh, you know, for some yeah. graduated kids. And uh, so uh, so anyway, we uh, um, uh, what I can't stand is, is and I think he, even Elon Musk, you know actually mentioned this as he said uh, it seems like we have great cameras out there except except uh when you're taking pictures of a ufo exactly and, yeah. and I, you know and I, that makes me angry because you know for one thing in a, on a cell phone the the sensor is like this big you know and so even though it might be 12 megapixels or 20 megapixels it's still it's still tiny and mm -hmm. and I, and so when you're trying to zoom in i mean you know if you know, if anybody would take a picture of the moon with their cell phone, you know, you know, you're, and then you try to zoom up on it, you're not going to see any craters on it. You're not going to be able to identify it. Same thing with an airplane. I, so with all the airplanes that we have, and I am in the flight path a little bit, maybe off to the side a bit, but, uh, but I was going to actually uh, show, you know, how different cameras, you know, what you need to be able to get a detailed a uh, picture of something in the sky because um, I have a uh, I do have a 600 or excuse me an 800 millimeter lens with a uh, and a Canon 5D SR uh, camera that has 50 megapixels so um, I was going to go from you know that on the way all the way down to your cheapest camera and mm -hmm. show that you know okay with this camera you have to have this camera with this setup on a tripod you know, versus, you know, a phone and, you know, whereas maybe with my 800 millimeter lens on a tripod, I might be able to get the detail where you can at least see what the airline is. Mm -hmm. um, but with a cell phone, when you try to zoom up on it or, or, or just a general, you know, uh, you know, just simple amateur camera, you're not going to get the detail, you know, and, no. and so, and, and the, the time it would take to set up an 800 millimeter lens, which is heavy, and get the camera ready. Uh, I don't keep my batteries in there. I don't mm. keep cards in there. So I'd have to run and do all that, you know. 
And so I was going to show you, you can't know it, you know, unless the, you, the UFO sits there for a couple hours, exactly, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're not going to get great pictures of it. It's just impossible. And well, so now I'm not going to carry around a camera with an 800 millimeter lens no. long <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> well, there, there was something that I was uh, experimenting for a while and actually uh, worked quite well. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't. Uh, I wasn't able to use it uh, or haven't been able to use it uh, for a UFO sort of uh, thing. But uh, I, uh, what I did was I retrofitted an old uh, Sony uh, night vision handicap. Oh, wow. And okay. with, it, with, it, with an infrared lens. Yeah, okay. And uh, it, you, obviously you got to get different shades. Obviously, if you're going to do this during, during the, the, the day or during the night, obviously you got to get different shades to protect the lens the uh, iris and all that but uh i i remember uh getting a daytime lens and, and testing it out in in, in during the, in the uh, beautiful sunny day in the afternoon uh -huh. hardly any clouds and you know you know looking at looking at the you know the stratosphere planes sure and this thing was picking them up like there was no tomorrow i i couldn't believe the detail that that it was able to pick up you know, I was like, "Wow!" So it's true because I, I've I've wondered. I, actually, I've I've heard of you know, it was, I think it was on YouTube somewhere where somebody has a uh, night vision camera mm -hmm. and they're you know with infrared and they're picking up things that they can't see with the naked eye. But, yeah, like but yeah. with the uh, with their camera, they're picking up things. And in mm -hmm. fact, I think I think the one that we always see with the uh, Navy. I'm not sure if if this is right or not. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh was that uh that object where the uh the, the jet fighter was um uh he he had it locked on it looked like a you know the one that looked like a tic tac i guess and it was mm -hmm. rotating a little bit and he was trying to lock on to it yeah so that was obviously done you could tell it was an infrared infrared but, yes you know but was he able to see it visibly you know or only in the infrared um i i don't know uh somebody told me that he couldn't but yeah uh, but but somebody but they also are saying you know people that have have been using these infrared cameras are saying that they're picking up stuff that you can't see with the naked eye and that's and, and they're obviously you know uh, flying to some type of aircraft which is wild you know that you know um, I, and so I get you know if you're saying that. If you're saying that you can see stuff and I've heard of that before, then, you know, I think I might go ahead and get myself. <laughs> you know, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I, I, I was skeptical of it too. I just, uh -huh. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll give it a shot. And, uh, it was hard to find a lens in the first place. I had to actually go to eBay to, to actually find one of these lenses. Okay. And I, I ordered it. To, it came out. Uh, it, it, and when it when it arrived, it, it, it basically it, it, it you just can screw it on to the inner uh, mechanism of the 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 uh, lens part. Okay. It actually screws right in there, so it's actually really uh, handy. So it screws and right on the outside of your right lens, on, like like filter. like uh, the old Sony Handycams. Okay. Again, again, they they have the different models and they have different uh, fits and all that. But I I grabbed the one for the this particular model. Yeah. And it it does have like a, uh, it does have like a sort of threading in the in, inner part of the the uh, the structure. Okay. And you can literally screw it right in there and it fastens. And uh, it, and I, I was wow. Okay, this is pretty That's easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We we have a question uh, there for you, Jack. Can you see? Can you read that? Okay. Oh, I sure can. Yeah. Uh, uh, Paranorm Girl Podcast. Okay. What were Jack's opinions, belief on this phenomenon before his experience compared to what they became after? How did it change him? Um, I had always thought that um, um, you know, I I was always interested in astronomy, but. Um, but I always thought that uh, that yes, there's life on other planets. Obviously, there has to be. This this the universe is just too big. I think um, uh, I was I was watching some documentary where they said that uh, um, basically, if you take um, uh, a grain of sand, um, that there's there's uh, there's 
there's more stars in the universe than there are grains of sand on all the beaches around the world. And that's just unbelievable to to hear that there are that many um, suns. And now, and now we now we know that uh, um, you know that uh, nearly all of them that they're seeing are, you know have planets around it. So um, um, so you know uh, I've been following like what the Fermi paradox, for instance, means that equation, you know, and and some of the other things. And now this is afterwards. You know, and of course, in 1994, we didn't have the Internet. So it was just, you know, um, it, it was just uh, like um, just stories that we would, you know, our friends would talk about. And uh, and I, I thought, you know, uh, I had never seen anything myself. Never, never. Mm -hmm. You know, everything I've seen, I could explain. You know, I knew my way around the sky, uh, especially when I got my job. Um, and uh, got into the stars uh, in, in astronomy with, with a new telescope. And uh, so, um, but I never saw anything I couldn't explain. I, I figured, uh, um, you know, uh, I, I, I kind of was wondering if, you know, with uh, hearing stories about Foo Fighters during World War II and mm -hmm. also that there was a big, uh, influx of UFO stories, especially after World War II or after we blew up the atomic bomb. Yeah. Uh, um, that, uh, and I couldn't imagine a, a, a more important time that would alert any civilization, if they're out there, um, that would alert uh, any civilization that all of a sudden this planet that, you know, had, uh, that we're using horse and buggies just 40 years prior. Are all of a sudden exploding, uh, you know, uh, atomic bombs, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I mean, think about the technology uh, the advancement in those fifty years uh, was spectacular, you know. Um, but uh, but I could imagine that would it would alert, you know. Uh, so so it would made sense to me that uh, there would be a, a large. Uh, you know, influx of observations of, of UFOs uh, right after World War, World War II, um, and so that kind of um, kind of made me think, yeah, maybe we are being visited. Maybe uh, uh, these uh, these you know these beings are are worried about our you know about our planet, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it would make sense, you know. And I I don't I of course I don't know. It just seems like with, uh, you know, um, uh, what we're seeing in the solar system, you know, it, it, it seems like, if, you know, I, there has to be life out there. I actually believe now well, in panspermia. I think, I think, I, I do think that, uh, you know, uh, um, asteroids can, um, you know, fly through, fly through the upper atmosphere of a planet pick up some bacteria and, and transfer it somewhere else. It's it's um, funny that you should mention panspermia because we, really? we were actually yeah we were actually talking about that not too long ago. But oh okay, yeah, that, that's that's interesting that you bring that up. But go ahead, sorry. Yeah, I, I think so. And and what what made me think that was because when you know the when they wa uh, wash the windows down of the International Space Station. Mm -hmm. They, they find pollen up there and bacteria and, you know, they find living organisms, mm -hmm, you know, yeah. up there they pick up, you know, so there, if there's stuff that high in the, uh, which is really outside the atmosphere, yeah. but they're picking stuff up from that distance from the planet, then of course we have rocks, you know, that are being slingshot around, the, you know, the earth and probably picking up, uh, um, all sorts of uh, life forms uh, that we have on the planet um, yeah. and, and bringing it somewhere else, you know, it's gotta be. Uh, oh, absolutely. So, so I think that's how, you know, just like how, you know, how, how does an Island that's in the middle of the Pacific get, you know, uh, seeds and, and animals, you know, land animals. I mean, you know, uh, you know, it's, um, you know, life has a way of being able to transport itself. And, and, mm, and yeah, think about it. 
I mean, that's, I guess that's the whole idea of the universe. Uh, so I think, uh, even though I'm disappointed that we haven't seen anything on Mars or whatever, you know, I think there's some bacteria on Mars. There's got to be some microbes. I, I just can't believe that a planet that close to us is completely sterile of, and void of all, every, you know, all microbes yeah. and everything. It's just hard for me to believe. I, I would think it'd be more likely than not that there is you know something there and then, the, and the question is broken. at one point was that planet somewhat inhabitable you know uh and, and 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 there's bound to be some sort of evidence evidence of it we just we unfortunately just have, have they not found there. ice they found ice up there well they found ice yeah, they but found they, ice yeah there's yeah. water there yeah we know yeah. that water is percolating out of the ground in places um so and i think you know once we get to the mars and and put in a uh um, a colony there and it'd be most likely that we would be underneath you know the, you know to because the the radiation from the sun they don't have much of an atmosphere no uh, not a not a good enough one um and you would get hit with a lot of uh radiation so you know it'd be likely to be i, I bet there's a an area of comfort down and you know if, you know dig down or find a lava tube or something like that, um, that we can get uh, a colony, you know, uh, down in one and, and be a better temperature, warmer, and probably have liquid water down there if we uh, um, under pressures. So I don't know, uh, you know, I think I, I think there's some life on Mars, sure, sure. What, what do you think about this, Jack? Um, you know, I, I, us humans are, are rely on tangibility, rely rely yeah. on our senses, sure, and that perhaps these UFOs and 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 so on and so on, or these inhabitants from other planets throughout the universe, whatever, are on a totally different sort of dial, if you will, a different frequency, sure, something yeah. that that we uh, cannot. Um, uh, understand with our knowledge and and right. and our senses, our senses and that and that's how they're able to sort of elude us maybe yeah i i can see it sure i can see that um i've i've actually thought about that yeah. uh because i've been um uh, uh well uh let's see the um i've i've uh um i caught lyme disease uh, yeah um, back about 10 12 years oh wow ago. yeah my niece and so yeah. ever ever since then uh, one of the symptoms i get is um, is uh, sleep paralysis oh okay on my back. and so there's been a couple times when i would <laughs> i would uh, uh be paralyzed my brain would be awake and i would see the you know the the shadows you know that were human shaped go across and you know, and, and I, and I would think I, I would, it frightens me, but, uh, um, but I, I know they're not real because the dog, our dog, Labrador Retriever, who always sleeps with us. Yeah. Uh, um, um, of course he sleeps with us. He, uh, or she now, um, she, uh, uh, you know, she didn't react. So, so I knew it wasn't an intruder or, whereas at first I thought uh, they, at first I think they think they are or something, mm -hmm. but but it, it uh, uh, for, you know, but as a scientist, it's very interesting because everybody sees the same thing in that state, that sleep paralysis thing. Yeah. And so, and, and so it's like, is this, is this really, why are we hallucinating the same exact thing all around the world? You know, mm. just a, a human shaped shadow. And we had the TV on this one time we had a TV on and, uh, and it, it passed in front of the TV and it, it dimmed out the, the TV, like it was there. It was, it was crazy. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think, um, you know, uh, I never really thought about it, uh, before this, uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, but then I, I remember seeing movies where they have given, you know, like, uh, like, Native Americans have given, uh, you know, some people uh, some kind of uh, herb or plant or whatever, and then they all of a sudden see, you know, 
crazy stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, our, our people, you know, and we know that there are some, you know, uh, LSD, for instance, you know, um, uh, uh, activates different parts of our brain yeah. to, to a heightened sense. Are we, mm -hmm. you know, is this actually a hallucination or are we yeah. actually tuning our brain into seeing something that's really is there, but it's just not, you know, it's just not in our dimension. Um, exactly. I, I don't know what to think about this. Um, and, uh, I would never try it because of my Lyme disease. I've never tried that before. Uh, my sister did. She was 10 years older than me, so she was the, one of the hippies. And it put her in the hospital twice. So mm. no no way am I going to do something yeah. anything like that before. I, I would uh, never try I, so, I, I've heard stories. I remember seeing a movie, actually, that, that sort of used that premise. Um, uh, uh, you know, where they, they were cooking and, and cooking the, the drug actually in this oh, old, yeah. old abandoned house in the middle of nowhere. And they started, they got into the uh, stash and, and they started hallucinating, but they gave you the premise, like, are they actually hallucinating or is, is this house really haunted? Sure. You yeah. know, so kind of a, that sort of similar premise yeah. i guess it, it just makes you wonder it really does i it, i mean it does yeah it, I, I mean and, and it seems like it's uh well most of the time i'm my eyes are closed and i can't see anything but it's frightening to be in that state and so mm. um i you know i i i do manage to, you know i try to con either i try to concentrate on on trying to move a limb and once i am able to move then i snap out of it but i hate being in that state you Feel like yeah. you're gonna die you know mm -hmm. and uh and, and uh you get this weird tingle in the back of your head and but i am actually able to kind of scream out a little bit and so one, uh, my wife will will hear me and then she'll you know she once she touches me i wake up it's, it's wake really up. strange is that yeah. all she has to do is touch me and i wake up and in fact uh um i was uh, i fell asleep on uh, the couch one time and, um, uh, this was crazy, but, uh, uh, but, but I had a, you know, sleep paralysis episode and I started screaming for my son to snap me out of it. Yeah. Uh, who was, who was upstairs, but it wasn't, uh, my son who came to the rescue. It was my dog came over oh, wow. and, and actually, uh, uh, put his snout on under my arm and lifted it up, you know, oh, wow. kind of jiggled me awake there. And, uh, and then he looked at me and then walked off. It was, it was really strange that, yeah. you know, th thank you, buddy. You know, that's <laughs> thing, but it was like, wow, you really, you really Maybe your dog me. didn't react to <laughs> um, what, the one instance you mentioned where your dog, what didn't react, maybe it, it, she didn't react because she's just used to it. It's a possibility. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I mean, if they can see, you know, if they see things and, and it doesn't bother them, I suppose. Uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you, there was uh, one time when uh, I had an episode and thank goodness I don't have them as much anymore. I've learned that if you don't sleep on your back, uh, you know, you don't get into that. It, um, so I sleep on my side. Mainly, but um but uh, 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 but I fell asleep on the couch at my mother's house, and uh, we've always thought that that house. My mom thinks my that that house is haunted, you know. Mm. And I, I I don't know. She said she's seen doors close on their own and stuff like that. But but I'll tell you, I uh, 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 I when I had a sleep paralysis episode in that in the living room with uh, um, um, and it was like three in the morning or whatever, uh, lights were all on and um tv was on but i had the sleep paralysis episode my eyes open and there was just a parade of shadow people going by i mean it was wow. absolutely a parade from going going from coming out from the sliding the outdoor sliding glass door into the house and going off kind of like in a just in a file uh, you know a, in a line file and i screamed loud enough to where my wife came and, and uh, woke me up but um, uh, but, uh, uh, and I told her, I said, I've never seen so many shadow people, uh, in, a, in one of these episodes before when, when you going on here. Yeah. When, when, when you screamed, how, how did the shadow people react? Did they react? They didn't seem to react. No. 
They didn't seem to react at all. Oh, yeah. No, no. They, uh, I've had some kind of go over and look at me, kind of, hunt, but then they just go off and and over. It's it's really strange. I just can't yeah. believe that I'm hallucinating this because so many people are seeing the same darn thing. They don't seem to ever bother me. I mean, yeah. You know, I you know they they don't uh, um, you know I say a little prayer or something like that usually and 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 I I don't know I just you know, in some in some ways, I I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm able to. I don't know. I've heard some stories where some bad ones would would, would sit on their chest and they can't breathe or something like that. Old hag syndrome. You know, yeah, the old yeah. hag. Yeah. That, that's where nightmare comes from. Actually, yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so, and but you really do feel like you're dying, and, and but and I wondered if I was breathing or not, and uh, and I so I was consciously trying to breathe more and I actually made myself uh you know like you know get the the pins and needles because I got too much oxygen so uh so yeah you're breathing you you really are breathing and you know but uh you, you shouldn't be afraid of it but uh but a lot you know it, it is frightening experience it would be yeah absolutely absolutely yeah, I, I, I I mean, I've I've only ever had one. I, I believe I've only had one uh, incident where I seen a uh, shadow person, mm -hmm. and it was quite unique. And uh, obviously, not uh, in the same sort of fashion that you have seen them. But I was totally conscious. I was completely awake, and uh, yeah, it's, yeah. I was actually right. I was actually snapping some pictures, and then yeah. all of a sudden, I'm like, okay, uh, there's. Two people in front of me. Wait a sec. Uh, where's the third person here? What, what's going on? And in the photo, there was two people. There's uh -huh. three people. And then all of a sudden, when I asked, the the person in between us actually veered off and just completely disappeared into the corner of the uh, location that we were in. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, what just what just happened here? Just happened. Oh, yeah. That's right. Interesting. Yeah, it is. Well, and well, and then uh, you know, we kind of joke about it too. Is that when my son was born, um, and he was in his little walker? Uh, you know, it was like a, that thing that those things that you sit you sit them into, and then they they kind of you know walk. They don't they they're not strong enough to to walk themselves, but they can walk around in this little circular thing where they have yeah. walls all around. Well, anyway, uh, uh, my son kind of walked over to a corner and was looking in a direction and just started laughing. He was like laughing at the wall. It made no sense, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, and so my wife and I are thinking, you know, is he seeing something that we can't see, you know? And so, yeah, we, you know, I'm, yes, I'm a scientist, but I also have an open mind that we haven't discovered everything there is to discover yet. You know, of course not, you know, so um you know and then hearing about uh quantum physics i you know and uh um you know that, that there are possibly 11 dimensions or something mm, like yeah that. exactly uh, it, it, you just you just never know i mean uh it's crazy my son actually is a uh now he's he's an adult and he, he got a job at a, at a nuclear power plant he was a oh wow major. yeah so, nice so science is in our in our in our um blood now you know that's but, that's uh, that's nice. Yeah, he's yeah, science. I just really saw happy. a door open behind you. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. a shadow person walk yeah, the, through. The, the door just. Yeah, that's a bathroom right there. Well, the one good thing is that we're the first owners of this house. Nobody's died here. <laughs> but uh, well, but uh, so um, but anyway, but yeah, my mom's house is definitely different. She. Uh, uh, that's an older 1940s, 1950s house, and people have actually, the previous owners did die in that house. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> there you go. I, I think that, you're right. Did, did it actually open? Or was it, 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 yeah, did, it did. It did. Yeah, you're. Oh, the dog. Oh, the dog. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh. I, I did see the door open, and I just uh -huh. I, I thought it might have been the dog, but I wasn't sure because I didn't see the dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's completely blocked. <laughs> oh, poor little it's dog. funny how no. it's funny how we're talking about this. Yeah, now. yeah. <laughs> this is well, buddy. I we had two. They were from the same litter, 
and uh, <laughs> uh, this is Autumn, and uh, they were uh, her twin brother passed away last year. So poor, poor guy, Buddy. Buddy is the one that woke me up. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so Autumn is the one that sleeps with us now every night, and uh, she's the one that didn't react to that. But she tends to have a our our doors for some reason. Uh, they close on their own, you know, I don't know, they're just not balanced correctly. And so she'll walk into the bathroom or my, uh, my daughter's room and then, and then the door closes behind her and she can't get out. So she does that quite often. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that, that's funny. That, well, that happened. You know, this is kind of some of the coincidences that had, you know, I, I don't know if you watch the, the show, um, uh, and remember at the beginning that, you know, my friends, always remark you know uh, this is something that could only happen to to me and i, I you know in, in another podcast there was somebody that actually uh, a, uh asked me about that, that yeah i remember yeah I remember synchronicity that. or something like that and i would like to talk to this guy because there there is something about it it just seems like you know i have like crazy you know coincidences here we're talking about you know hauntings and, and then the dog you know, and we're talking about the dog too, and she, you know, she does that right here. You know, it's just a crazy coincidence. It is. it is. Um, and so yeah, I have lots of crazy coincidences that happen. Um, and do you, do you do you think there there are such things as coincidences, or or what what's your what's your thoughts on? Oh, I've I've heard yeah the movies <laughs> say that there there ain't no uh, coincidences. It's you know there's something to it. I. Uh, I think in my case, there's it's there's too many coincidences that uh, to ignore them. It can't be, it can't be, um, uh, you know. So, uh, my very best friend that I grew up with, uh, in Michigan. Um, I mean, we used to be able to, uh, we we'd, we'd like start singing or humming the, a song at the very same time, same song, you know, it, and. Uh, um, you know, so things like that, for instance, he used to think I was, uh, you know, he, he would say, you're psychic, you know, you, you know, things that are going to happen before it happens. Uh, my sister is like that, too, a little bit. But um, but I, I don't I, I don't know, you know, coincidence or is it something else? I, I don't know. It seems like uh, people do say, you know, Jack, that's something that could only happen to you, you know. Uh, and not just about this UFO thing, but but uh, but other other things, you know, that that happen that tend to be, uh, you know, just anno annoying issues, you know, most of the time that actually turn out to be okay you know, later. But uh, you know, it's I have an interesting life. I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it it like I said that that uh, incident when I, I I I do remember hearing something about it when it did go down a few years later. Yeah. But uh, and then when I saw saw the episode, I'm like, oh wow, I do remember that. But this is this is really really cool. Yeah. And, and that we were able to sort of, uh, you know, get in touch with you and, and have you on the show. It's it, it's been great, okay. Jack. Thank yeah. thank you thank you so much. Re really really Hi, intriguing. I I hope I did all right. And I, oh, you're I, awesome. Uh, really i i i'm really um i uh um i'm really trying to get to everybody i want i'm i've always been a fair person and so you know i i i'm not gonna you know say yes to this one guy and say no i'm not gonna do an interview with this guy mm -hmm. um and and i'm i'm actually embarrassed by the way I look because I'm probably at the heaviest I've ever been <laughs> and so you know um I uh but um uh, you know so but I but I I you know I don't know I think um for my I guess because I was in the weather service and 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 I was always I was getting I would get phone calls all the time about from frightened people that, mm -hmm. you know, want to know, was there a tornado coming their way or something like that, a flood or whatever. And so I, you know, just customer service was always, and, you know, for the last 30 years that I did my job, that was, you know, um, and so this is just an add on to, to, you know, uh, to what I witnessed before I, I, 
it, it'd be the same thing if if the worst tornado ever in history came through and I and I was watching uh, mm. um, watching it on on radar. I would I would uh, feel obligated to discuss. You know, uh, I think these are observations that that need to to be do- well documented. You know, yeah, basically. absolutely. Uh, I, and again, I'm not I'm not. Uh, everything that I write about is going to be open, open source. I don't know where to put it, but, but, uh, but it's going to be freely available to everybody. I'm not going to be selling books on Amazon or anything like that. No, nothing I do is going to be purely uh, uh, free, and I'm happy to do it. And, um, and no, I looking. No, I'm not looking for fame. I, you know, I mean, after 25 years, I didn't really talk about it much. So, um, you know, uh, but uh, I'm actually surprised this many people are interested, uh, to be honest, because it happened so long ago. Yeah. Uh, so I really I, I didn't think anybody would be interested in it, uh, anymore, you know, but uh, but yeah, I'm glad, you know, I'm glad that uh, um, I can finally, you know, yeah, get vindication from, you know, the, the, the college, you know, my my uh, co-workers, you know, and other colleagues from the National Weather Service who, you know, who thought I, you know, embarrassed the entire Weather Service, but uh, um, uh, it did, it did uh, create a lot of confusion and panic within the Weather Service a bit, and I know we, we wanted, they, the Weather Service did not want to become the UFO reporting. Uh, yeah, yeah, service, exactly. You know, and, and, but the, the boss, the big boss, uh, uh, well, my area manager was, he was really ticked off about the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, and, and my, uh, one of my uh, colleagues, uh, he was one of the intern trainers. I was considered an intern, but I was a graduate intern by this time. Was, we were waiting for the modernization of the weather service to complete. Yeah. But anyway, um, uh, so, uh, but he was, he was defending me, you know, to, to the area manager and saying, no, he was professional on the phone call. No, 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 you know? And, um, and so finally, uh, Joe Friday, our weather service director said, there's not going to be any, there will be no, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, action taken, you know, remedial action taken Mm -hmm. against, you know, me. Yeah, and, and so I thought that was it, but but then, you know, uh, I would uh, my my uh, performance appraisals would be really good. I was really good at computers back then. I mm-hmm. learned uh, how to operate DOS, and then I learned Quick Basic, and I started writing programs for the office here in 1994 and stuff. Yeah. and yet uh, and yet the boss would put me down as an outstanding on my and for that one rating and uh but they they all had to go to the uh the uh, the, the next guy up uh who was who was very controlling and you know and uh very controlling and uh, a bean counter you know and he he would knock me down i mean he he would here i am uh programming doing things that with the computers that really not many people were able to do at that point and uh and yet i'm knocked down to fully successful which is basically average i mean basically you know that's average it's like getting a c you know yeah you know and and so uh that's when um my my boss actually said uh jack he said nobody can tell me uh when you go start bidding out for promotion and jobs nobody can tell me uh, uh what i write down in your letter of recommendation and, and, he, and then he said but you you need to go get out of michigan because of the area manager race mm. and um, so it was really sad to have to leave i like atlanta but uh but i miss michigan i you really miss michigan yeah. yeah oh yeah quite, quite a bit i i want to Unfortunately, my wife has a good job down here, so yeah, you know, and she's got she can retire for a while. So otherwise, I'd be in Michigan right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, I, 
you know what i i uh i've been to michigan a few times um not not all over michigan i i think i've okay. I've, I've been to i think one of my favorite spots in michigan is frankenmuth oh yeah i love frankenmuth, <laughs> love frankenmuth. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we camp there and i spend i can spend the whole day in that christmas shop yeah oh i know <laughs> it's humongous yeah it's humongous we, we, we get we we actually uh made a uh, when my wife and I got married, uh, we decided that we were going to buy a, you know, one of those Department Fifty Six Christmas buildings each, yeah, you know, one one a year. So we have <laughs> quite a quite a collection now. <laughs> and so yeah, so we we love uh, Franklin. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice little nice little town. Yeah. That's for yeah, sure. It's, it's nice really grown clean. over the years too. So yeah, really yeah. Nice. yeah. So, but but West Michigan is really beautiful. You ought to. On over the I I would I would like to make my yeah. way over there and eventually I will for sure. Uh, like I said, I've uh, what I've seen in Michigan. Obviously, I've I've liked and that uh, right. I'd like to explore more. Sure, so. yeah, you got the um, uh, Silver Lake uh, is an area where it's nothing but sand dunes for for miles and miles. You could be in there and. You know, there's a lot of people that do their dune buggies in there, but you could stand in the middle of it and think you're in the Sahara Desert because all you see is sand all around you. But, uh, and then you go up further up uh, the coast or shoreline, say in Michigan, um, you got Sleeping Bear Dunes, and then you have Traverse City, and then you got uh, Charlevoix is beautiful, Petoskey, there's, there's a skiing town um, up there, and then uh, Mackinac Island is absolutely beautiful. Um, have you ever been up to there? No, yeah. I've never been up that far. No, yeah. I like I said, the the furthest uh, in, in Michigan I've been is is uh, Frankenmuth. Unfortunately, really? Oh yeah, yeah. you got to get over. Yeah. yeah, but there, yeah, there's like I said, there's there's a lot there that uh, yeah, I would definitely. Uh, I've got a few friends in Michigan, so oh, yeah. Uh, okay. yeah, eventually I will eventually make it over there. I'm sure. So for sure, oh, for yeah, sure. absolutely. Well, but, if you, if you, we uh, we camp up there through the summer, so um, yeah, uh, yeah. If you uh, yeah, if you ever get over to Muskegon Way, or or maybe we can meet at the Frank or something. Sure, I, yeah. You we, never know. We, Absolutely. You know, someday, so. Absolutely, uh, Jack. Yeah. That would be wonderful. But, um, but if you want me to, uh, if you ever want me to um, uh, join in any future podcasts absolutely we would yeah, love to have I'll, you back we, we, we would love oh, to have okay. you back yeah uh yeah, yeah. Anytime, anytime yeah we'd love to have you back it, it, it's been great having you on and uh Thanks absolutely so sure, sure um is there anything else that you'd like to, to to share there before we go um no just thank you so much for uh um for inviting me on your show and uh um it's uh um, i have a few set up uh well one is uh is a uh I'm not sure what it is. I think I think she's she's a PhD uh, uh, student mm -hmm. and uh, in kind of like socio psychology or something like that. And, and she's a skeptic, so she wants me to uh, she wants to interview me, not on not on YouTube, but she wants to talk to me. I don't know if she's trying to do a paper or thesis on. Uh, mass hysteria or something, <laughs> or something like that. You know, so this might I'll give be careful about those students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's the next one. That's the so next yeah. One. I I I don't say no to anybody really. I'm I'm trying to be fair for everybody. So well, I, I might take a while to get to uh, answering uh, any any messages or questions people have but uh, uh i get to them i'll get to everybody i promise so. well you know we're, we're glad you answered us and uh you, you were able to come on so uh we yeah absolutely jack we'd love to have you back on and and okay. and I, I would love to stay in touch with you absolutely love to right. uh, love to too right, let's let's definitely stay in touch and uh um yeah if you ever find somebody that can take these graphics and you know colorize them better i'd be happy um, who knows I, like you said i i've got them now i i don't know i i might i don't know if i okay. i've spruced them up a little bit for you i could try yeah. oh well i mean you know it, it it's uh it's in no well it's no hurry i mean I, i'm sure we'll get to it and um you know and again you know it's 
I'm not going to make money off this. This is when I get my paper done. It's going out. I'll let you yeah. guys know right away. Absolutely. Okay? Yeah. And um, and hopefully I can have some. I may have to have some hand graphics for myself. And I don't draw very well, but I hope I, hope I can get by. You know. So, <laughs> but um, but anyway, I appreciate you. Uh, um, you know, interviewing and uh, and I'll have uh, I'll have that paper out within the next six months. So uh, be Sounds watching good. for that. And, and it's. So awesome. S- sounds yeah. good, Jack. Thank sure. thank you again. Thanks, yeah, Jack. thank you very much. Take okay. take care. All right, you too. All right. Take care. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Ah, uh, really cool, man. Yeah. I I really enjoyed him. Uh, you know, it's um conversation started getting really juicy towards the end, unfortunately. It's always like that. It's always like that. Yeah. Um so we're but, definitely going to have to have him back. Well, because he was opening up about other stuff too, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it wasn't just his uh, experience yeah. with the UFO, uh, but others, like his personal sort of uh, mm-hmm. battle with uh, sleep paralysis and stuff like that. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, uh, I yeah, I would absolutely love to have him back on. Who knows? Maybe uh, some sort of, hey, we might even have another UFO uh, dark discussions thing. There you go. You know, hey, who knows? Um, but, uh, it's, it's really unique because, uh, he, it, it, it's like a different perspective, you know, it's, yeah. it, it's somebody who had to be careful of what he was saying at the time because of his job, mm-hmm. you know, as, as he mentioned, working for the government, you know, the national weather service. Yeah. And it wasn't until just like, you know, the last couple of years since his retirement, he's come forward, you know, and, and, and sort of talked about his experience. And of course, if, if you uh, want to see more about it, uh, the net Netflix series uh, on unsolved mysteries, yeah, uh, season three, uh, I believe it's episode two, something in the sky. Two or called. three, I believe. Um, I thought it was three, but I think it's actually episode two. Uh, so I'll tell it's, you in it, a second. anyways, it's called something in the sky is the episode. And uh, that's the one where they talk about the uh, 1994 uh, Lake Michigan uh, UFO mystery sort of scenario. And Jack, uh, who was a meteorologist uh, in Muskegon, uh, Muskegon there in, at the time and uh, witnessed it all, you know, mm. Wis- witnessed it all on radar. Uh, some very, very unusual shit, man. <laughs> Wow. Uh, just imagine that, though. You know, I, I, how would you react? I don't know. If it was you, you, how would you react? Like something on I, you. You know, I, this is not normal. Yeah, I'd probably react like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> That's pretty much how I would react. It's like, what the hell is this? And I would probably try to see if it was a glitch with the radar um, I mean, I don't know much about this stuff to begin with, but if I were a meteorologist, I would try to, you know, see if there was any kind of glitch mm-hmm. um, and try again. And if it happened again, then I'd be like, okay, something's really up here. Right. Yeah. Um, wow. We're, we're, uh, we're on a UFO row here. Uh, next Sunday, yeah. night, we have another uh, pretty intriguing uh, story coming forward. Uh, Ian, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this, man. Oh my, you know, like, like I, we, for, for the longest time we, I mean, we, we've been talking about UFOs here and there, but not nearly as much as, as we are now, you know? And I, I think what's really cool is the fact that, uh, we've got, uh, an author coming on uh next week uh next sunday night ian rogers who was at the time was was just a like a uh an amateur sort of ufo hunter at the time uh when a uh well known well it's not a well known but uh somewhat known case in the 80s late 80s early 90s in ottawa uh ottawa ontario just outside of ottawa ontario in a place called carp ontario and uh where a incident uh, was captured on vhs tape mm-hmm. um 
which is uh if you if you google it out there you'll you'll see it uh footage of it it's 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 not easy to find but it's not hard to find either um but the footage is out there and uh I, i'm going to try to secure it so we can uh sort of play it on here uh when ian's on next next uh sunday yeah. night but uh like i said he's also uh, an author uh a, a award-winning author of horror horror uh books and in fact uh one of his books right now is been optioned by sam ramey uh yeah. of uh the of the evil dead uh fame and more spider-man spider-man you know uh so uh I'm looking forward to talking to him uh, about the guardian ufo case there in uh, the late 80s early 90s which seemingly happened around a military installation base that is no longer in use mm -hmm. so was it the government was it military or was it something else i know we're gonna find out hopefully well somewhat find out i don't know but anyways once again i'd like to uh thank uh jack bushon for uh coming on tonight i, I mm -hmm. like i said i uh wow um i i didn't think it'd be difficult but i didn't think it'd be this easy it, he was he was just awesome so yeah definitely love to have him back on in the near future um uh, just a quick shout out to, to people in chat there who are, who are watching us here on youtube melissa quinn matt matt uh kristen uh, thank you for joining us too tonight and uh uh, there's been a few people. Let me just uh, go back. I gave and... Kristen the heads up about tonight's show. That's why. Oh, did you? Yeah, I did. Okay. And Claire's, out, Claire's there. And I just so people know, people. her show's season. Jeremy. Is, yes. It's all about UFOs this uh, this season. Thank him. Yeah, no, I, 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 put a, I put a thing out there in our community yeah. there. I no, but just it. for people who, who might be just listening and not aware of her podcast, podcast, the Paranormal Girl podcast. It's all about UFOs this season. Go check this it out. This season, yes. Check it out. Yeah. Uh, she she puts a, a, a great show on. Uh, she does an amazing job. Hard work. Very thorough stuff. And uh, go check it out. Ollie, thanks. Uh, Quinn, uh, it's par for the course. Uh, the, the chat's always, uh, <laughs> always fun. <laughs> we love it, man. But uh, thank you, guys. Um, and again, we'll see you next Sunday night. Um, until then, take care. Have a good night. Have a good night.